The series in Parallel Circuits Lab features three miniature lamps that are one half amp and 6.2 volts. You have a circuit board attached to a plastic sheet. Uh, we're going to create series and parallel circuits. First we're going to create a series circuit. You do that by opening up these side pieces and swinging out the aluminum arms. This is a series circuit. The power supply will be plugged into the lab table. This is an AC adapter. We're going to extend this by using alligator clips and these are predominantly used as my probes. It doesn't matter what color wiring you get. We know that uh, we could use red and black which usually denote positive and negative and it really doesn't matter. This is just a casing that we don't care what color it is. Okay, the lab begins by you checking. Uh, you want to light up the bulbs. Please do not contact your teacher and tell you that your equipment doesn't work until you have checked the side connections, screwing each of them in, and then we'll proceed. Take the two probes and first of all we'll begin by checking your light bulbs to see if they're working. You can put the two probes on either side of the screws, on either side of the electrical bulb or base. And if they light up, things are good. Excellent. We're ready for the lab. First thing we need to talk about is the circuit boards. The circuit boards have three bulbs and some aluminum strips. Do not at any point in time unscrew the plastic nut and move these metal strips. I'm going to show you two circuit boards. Somebody has flipped these. You notice that these two are pointing upward. This board, a lab group, has done something that they shouldn't have done. They've taken these off and flipped the metal. This is not facing the right direction. That will make the lab extremely difficult for them and for anybody else that follows them. So please do not unscrew these and take any piece off. Thank you. The multimeter should be in the off position when you obtain it. We've got two ends that the caps have been removed. Uh, it really doesn't matter which color goes where. Red usually denotes positive, black usually denotes negative, but the coloration is just insulation on the wire. So, uh, you know, it really wouldn't matter if you happen to put them in the wrong place. But we're going to place the black one in the gray port since I want to measure current. I notice it says 10 amps. I will also use the COM port with the red wire. When I wish to measure voltage, I will switch the 10 amp lead will go into the voltage or ohm reading on the right. We'll talk about that more later. Okay, I'm going to push this cap in here. All the way down, I'm going to push the red one into the com. I'm going to turn the reader, I'm going to turn the meter on to 10 amps on the ADC side and we're ready to go. Again, we want to pay attention to the fact that if my amp meter reading isn't positive, as you were expecting, if you happen to have gotten a negative reading, all you have to do is reverse the black and the red probes and place them on your series circuit in the same location, but just flip the black where the red is, the red where the black is, and that will reverse the sign for you. I'm not going to tell you where I'm placing that on the electronic circuit board right now because I want you to discover your own readings.
The next part of page two, down at the bottom, says that we're supposed to repeat the procedure, but now we're going to look at the current between R2 and R3. So my multimeter, or my amp meter, which will be measuring the current, will be placed as if it is a wire between these two points. Notice that I have my power supply at the end. I need both bulbs to light, or I haven't uh, set this up correctly. Now, one of the things with these tips from the amp meter, you may not get a reading like this. You may have to put them flat on the aluminum plate to get both lights to illuminate. I'd like to switch my meter from reading amperage, or current, to reading voltage. I'm going to do that by pulling out this black plug. They're wedged in here pretty tight. Put it on the right-hand side where we see voltage, or ohms, or milliamps. I also have to change the dial. I'm going to come over here to the other side of the meter. You usually select the lowest reading. Uh, I'm switching to VDC, which denotes we're ready to measure voltage. In order for me to find the voltage, or total voltage, between R2 and R3 for this entire path or circuit, I'm going to take the positive probe from the multimeter and place it near the positive probe for my power supply. I will take the negative probe from the multimeter and place it near the negative probe from the power supply. This will give me the total voltage for this circuit. To obtain the total voltage for a series circuit with resistor 1, 2, and 3, place the probe near the positive end of the power supply, place the negative probe of the voltmeter near the negative probe of the power supply. You can experiment with, if you get different readings, placing the probes out here, or moving them inward, or placing them here, see if it makes a difference. But this will be your total voltage for a series circuit. For a series circuit, the voltage is divided among the electrical resistors, or bulbs, in the circuit. The sum of the individual voltage drops will give you the total voltage drop for the entire circuit. Or said another way, V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. Add the answers together from the data table, and you will get the voltage total to compare the reading gained by doing this.
Now, if you happen to have determined the resistance of your circuit and found that you have different numbers for each response or answer, isn't it true that these are all the same bulbs? And don't they have similar bases? And shouldn't the numbers be the same? What could possibly be happening? Oh, look, we still have the wires connected. So this is adding to our resistance. 